Good morning. How is everybody? Can you hear me? My little Peter likes to tell me that I'm muted. Hey, Christy. Hey, Angela. Hey, Jenna. Hey, Julie. Good morning. Good morning, Kendra. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Millie. Good morning, Patricia. Hey, Robin. Good morning, Tabitha. Good morning, Tammy. Tabitha, I, I, I did not get my Fitbit to sync last night. You may have overcome me. I don't know. Did you get your steps? Julie, did you get steps yesterday? I saw that you were um at the farm probably getting steps in like crazy out there how'd everybody good morning cindy hey buckus you made it popped in on us ah oh, you did overcome me picking up sticks starting fires and picking up sticks yeah there's steps to be had then Definitely steps to be had. It's looking like rain out there at my house or snow, but Lord, it's way too hot for that. But um, yeah, the weather looks yucky outside. Yicky, yucky. How do y'all say that? Yuck. That's what it looks like. Yuck. I have a, a bonfire's worth of wood outside to burn. Uh, you just starting fires, you can come start a fire over here. You have to watch it. Looks yucky there too, Jenna. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Maybe like the old rainy night in Georgia song. I believe it's raining all over the world. It may be raining all over the world. Okay. Um, it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Also, um, here comes the weekend, right? There too, Tammy, where are you at? Michigan for Michelle, cold, Michigan, but it's sunny. Yeah, I'm sure it is cold. Texas, yeah. So Tammy's in Texas and Jenna's in Texas as well. So we got a couple of Texans with us. Way too warm in Pennsylvania. Yeah, my wife said the exact same thing this morning she's like this is not right it's going to be 65 in december where's the cold blah 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 and i said and this is what i said i don't know if i'm sure most of most of us remember uh that there was a blizzard in 1993 and although it was in i think march may have been in april anyway the blizzard of 93 it was hot as blazes about three days before it and then here came five, six, seven foot snow drifts in North Georgia. So I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, to uh, tempt God or or uh, shake my fist as it were at Him over this weather. Uh, I'm gonna go outside and get some things done while it's not so cold that my nose drips all day long. Good morning, Kristen. Yeah. Yeah, let's don't go back there. Yeah, I don't want snow drifts, none of that. Um, so yesterday we talked about some uh, supplement questions and I think, I feel like maybe somebody learned something yesterday. If not, somebody got their questions answered. I figured I would start today by asking, hey, is there anything that y'all wanna, uh, y'all need to talk about? Good morning, Kristen popped in there on us. Uh, other than there are there are more people here this morning. Good morning, Kendra, I see you popped in, and Kimberly. Good morning, and Dana, good morning. Dana, I, I know I ask you've already, my wife has, has told me it's Dana all day long, uh, but uh, I have a friend that spells her name the same as you, and she goes by Dana, so you tell me, Dana with an A, the A is long, Dana. Okay, settled it. My wife is right again. <laughs> Good morning, Dana. God bless you. You have to put up with me. You don't. You really, you don't have to put up with me. 
<laughs> you just suffer me, and that's good enough. That's good enough. All right. Uh, um, so back to my my original point. Uh, does anybody have anything that they want to hear about? Want to ask about questions, concerns, comments? Anything going right? I am. Uh, I'm looking forward to a good fat day. Who? Uh, somebody had posted they had a good fat day yesterday, and eggs and avocado sounds good to me today. Sounds good. I can do that twice and quick, quickly, easily. Easily. Michelle had it. Julie's done that one. Yeah, it's filling. Um, it's really filling. It's surprising to me how filling it is. The, the, the only problem I have with Good Fat Day is it just goes so quick. Uh, it just it's like whew, and it's gone. Uh, hadn't picked a day yet. Yeah, well, I, it's and it's uh, depending on uh, where you shop. Eggs are really inexpensive, uh, especially if you have chickens that are laying them. But uh, well, they may actually be more expensive if you have chickens that are laying them. But I digress. Uh, and then you can get avocados, um, even though they are also uh, relatively expensive at some uh, places, they're well worth it. They're well worth it. Avocados are extremely healthy, uh, uh, good for you, great fat for you, uh, and uh, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Making my battle plan for the next two weeks for when my five kids and their family comes in for the holidays, 21, 21 family members, great day in the morning. That will be a nice one. Yeah, having a plan is awesome. Julie's got a great point there. Um, yeah, it may be un unreasonable to expect uh, that you can do something uh, structured by somebody else. You may need to make your own game plan for the whole uh, weekend or the whole weekend, three, two weekends, three weekends depending on when they get here. I would say three. Um, so I'll just get to it. So this morning I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure that you guys um, knew that yesterday I announced we're having one more week of the challenge and that will be after Christmas week. So there won't be anything during Christmas week, nothing this coming week, but the week after Christmas, uh, one more week, and we'll call it the uh, <laughs> the weight loss after Christmas instead of the weight loss before Christmas. Um, and um, like I said, I got a, a, a special badge just for that week. It will be um, it will be an exclusive badge that you can only get for participating that week. And sometimes those, that's cool. It's not so much different than the current one. It's just different a little bit. Um, I have, I thought about what to say, how to, how to motivate or how to tie up or wrap up this, uh, this week's challenge roundups with you guys. And um, well, um, I figured since we had started with Jesus, we'd end with Jesus. That sounds good to me. Um, and let Jesus um, speak to us in his own words and see if we can get something out of it. I figured I would take uh, my text this morning from Mark chapter four and start uh, with verse three. Uh, Jesus says, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed. This Jesus talking about a sower. <clears throat> and um, I, I didn't even get a whole verse out, but let me, let me break for a minute and kind of tell you. Jesus is talking to a whole bunch of people here. And I'm, I believe that I'm talking to a whole bunch of people. You guys are a whole bunch of people. If you, 
uh, hold your 16 up to my one, y'all y'all have me outnumbered greatly. And I believe Jesus, when he was talking to uh, the masses, felt like he was talking to all of these people at one time. And um, there's no reason to believe that um, when this parable, when I read this parable, that we don't fall into all of these categories every day. We're not always going to fall into um, the perfect category. We're not always ready. So with that caveat in mind, let me, let me go on. Uh, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Seed sower, right? And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit. And the other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60 and some a hundred. Now Jesus ends it like this. And he said unto them, more words in red, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So we that have ears to hear, let us hear. Um, even such a close-knit group of followers as were these people. Remember, there was no cars. There was no uh, internet. There wasn't a, uh, an announce, a PA, right? There wasn't a there wasn't a, a public announcement. There wasn't a there wasn't a microphone and speakers. There wasn't a bullhorn. There was nothing to advertise. There weren't flyers. Um, there literally was word of mouth, and you had to stay close, right? So, what kind of soul searching was going on during this time, and um, what um, diversity could there have been to the group? other than the people that were in earshot of what was being said. So when Jesus said this, he literally was preaching to the crowd. He was, pre he was preaching to his immediate friends and his immediate surroundings, you know, the people that had heard from afar and came to the city. This Jesus is talking to them, and everybody didn't get it, right? Everybody didn't get it. And I love this is one of my favorite parables because Jesus comes back and explains this parable, right? Uh, the, the 12, listen, I'm going to keep reading this verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the 12 asked of him the parable. So they asked, hey, can you explain this parable? Because, hey, I, I believe that I'm a good seed, right? Or am I a sower? Or, I mean, and, and, and where did my, if I'm not the sower and somebody sowed something to me, where does the seed fall with me? Does it fall on rocks? Does it fall in the thorns? Does it fall on the good soil? Soil? <laughs> so, Jesus, um, Jesus said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that sin they may see and not perceive. Okay? And hearing they may hear and not understand, at least at any time they should be converted and their sin should be forgiven them. And then he said, kind of reprimanding the ones that do know. Okay? The ones that do know. So, I'm going to interpret that in my own way. Sometimes I'm the sower. Sometimes you're the sower, Jason, but sometimes you're the one being sowed too. And if you don't know when you're being sown to, then you have a much bigger possibility of the seeds being sown to you, being sown on rocks or being sown with thorns. If you don't have ears to hear and you're not come 
compartmentalizing and comprehending what is being laid out before you for the betterment of your faith or your walk or your whatever, then it's very possible that one of the one of these prophecies could be detrimental or parables, I'm sorry, to to the seed, detrimental to the seed. Not necessarily the ground, but the seed. So let's let Jesus explain it. <clears throat> he does say, know ye not these, this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? Hopefully this will be good for us. I'm hoping today, Christy, that we can take Jesus at his word that when he tells us something or when he speaks to us as believers, we might learn to interpret the parables, that we might have ears to hear, right? And once we've had ears to hear, we might, as, as I've been mentioning the last week or so, we might become part of this commission. Some people call it the Great Commission, but this commission from him to spread his word, to talk about him, to let to live our lives and let our lives speak of Jesus. So let Jesus uh, interpret the parable for us. This is Mark chapter four, verse 14. The sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. How many of you have been remembering my very few sparse lessons or messages from this week? How many maybe have done some last week? Maybe to remember that we've talked about being empowered spirit-filled, able to do even great works, right? Unstoppable, mighty works. Some of those things we have discussed. Now, the sower soweth the word. And we all, I, if you've been paying attention, if not, y'all need to go back and watch Roundups until you find it. We all are called to be sowers. We all are called to be sowers, right? We are now, and these are they by the wayside. Okay, so um, where the word is sown, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, listen, Satan cometh in immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay, we all are victims of Satan at some time or another. Maybe, maybe something like this happened. You heard about a weight loss challenge. You got really excited, right? You got really excited. You accepted the challenge and you never got started. Something happened before day one. Something happened before day one and you never got started. That's that I, I'm giving you an example of how this parable may might play out. Okay, might play out. Not necessarily, but it may. And these are they uh, likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they had heard the word, immediately received it with gladness, and having no root in themselves, and so endured, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, and immediately they were offended. Right? How many of you can relate to that? Hey, Heather. Welcome. Good morning. How many of you can relate to starting good, to getting started good, and there's just, there's no roots there. I hadn't put forth, I, I hadn't journaled, I hadn't, I haven't uh, net, networked, I don't have a battle buddy, I've not reached out yet, I don't know where the chat feature is, I've not put those things into use, 
I'm not engaged to things that, that develop roots in my weight loss program. So any wind that blows on me will blow me over and, I, and, I'm, and I'm out, right? This, this may not be what Jesus is talking about specifically. I'm giving you an example, okay? This is an example, okay? And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entereth in and choketh the word and it becometh unfruitful. All right. I can, I'm a victim of this. I am a, I am, I participate in every bit of these. I'm sorry. And if, if, if that lets you down, it, it's just the truth. Listen, having great success with something and then thinking, oh, well, I can just add one food to my diet. And it's not, I mean, everybody else eats this. And it doesn't, everybody else drinks this. Everybody else goes here. Everybody else does this thing. And they're able to do whatever. Right, uh, this eventually turns into I do all of these things, and this one thing that I've held on to is supposed to be the thing that keeps. Look, so I do all this, and I'm successful. I add this, and I add this, and I add this, but I'm still doing all these things, and then this falls off, and this comes on, and this falls off, and this goes on. The next thing you know, that's what I'm leaving with. I'm one little thing from my what was working. And five things from what the world was doing. And the next thing you know, that's I, I'm I'm back where I started. I'm back where I started. Can anybody relate? Can anybody relate? This is a parable of Jesus now. And then listen, and these are they which are sown in good ground, so as hear the word. And receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. Right? We've got an opportunity as believers to be all of these things, or we can realize, Dana, that we are good soul. I'm always good soil, Kendra. You're always good soil, Robin. Always. It's just that that there's there sometimes, sometimes when it's not when when it's not delivered to me in the perfect package to where I know it's meant just for me, or I didn't have my ears on, if I didn't have my ears to hear on the message, the word will not land on my fertile spot, okay? In order for me, Kristen, to turn into the sower, to accept my commission, I need to remember that the gift, the free gift that was given to me applies across the board in my life. I can't just have one little fertile spot, Patricia, that's right here. If you feed right here on this fertile spot, it'll grow well. But I've got all of these gray areas around me that I don't tend to because I'm not focusing on those things. I'll try to have a lesson for that next, next uh, week after next about those unfertile spots. But I would like to leave you with a commission today, okay? There's been some seed sown, but are you ready to be a sower? Are you ready to be a sower? Go today, if you will, to your little share feature and find something that inspires you in the Shibboleth website. Find something that inspires you. Find something that has 
um, uh, blessed you, okay? And share it. Share it to share it to your Facebook. Share it with your friends in a text message. Share it on your Instagram. Share it. Just go outside and share it with your neighbor. If you're not tech savvy, whatever. But share it. Go and be a sower. Go and be a sower. And let's get rid of this mentality that somebody has to always sow to us, Millie. If we'll just let the seed, right? Jesus also talked about seeds that were sown in fertile ground, but they also grew up with the tares. And you didn't pull up the tares and the fertile seed just to get them out to re sow the whole seed. You let them grow up together, okay? Sometimes that seed has been sown in with some other stuff. And when it's time, we can pluck the other stuff out, but let's not let the good stuff stop growing in us in the meantime. Be a sower today. Be a sower today. I believe everyone here has had a seed sown into fertile, good soil. I believe you do. I believe you are. And I believe we can pass this on this weekend, this Christmas. Don't forget to, uh, to keep Jesus in Christmas. And uh, I hope I've been able to keep Jesus in Christmas for you guys leading up this week.